Bare gå home, Kjær. Jeg skal legge deg bli home. Det er gøy, da. Jeg har mistet home, så jeg skal bli tilbake for Christmas og se Euroglyphies og sånt. Her er det New York. Det er gøy, da. Jeg har det. Jeg tror det var den første fight jeg virkelig hadde vært inne og hadde fun og enjoyed meg selv, i stedet for å prøve å gå og ta noen hodet av. Kompart til debut, hva var atmosfæren som denne tiden? Det var bra. Det var stadig mange av Irish. Det var ikke så mye som St. Paddy's Day, men jeg tror at vi hadde hatt dem i arenaen. Når det gjelder St. Paddy's Day, var vi stadig nødt til å gå tilbake. Hvordan var det? Hvordan var det nå siden... You forgot to be super all in. Looking back on some parties there, it was, you know, yourself. It was just, it was something else, a different type of experience. Walking out there in front of 5,000, whatever, odd Irish people or not, even just regular sports fans who were there, going absolutely crazy. Uh, Conor McGregor standing beside you, walking down. It was just like, it's hard to explain the feeling what I felt, but. Actually, it's not hard to explain this. I felt very comfortable. I felt, I felt at home. Walking out behind you, I don't know. I am so glad I wasn't getting in the ring because I don't think I would have cried in the corner. It was scary for me. <laughs> I, and I, I was only com coming out as just as a brother. So actually getting in there and having to perform and fight it under under that kind of pressure on your first fight without no headgear, the small gloves on, and everyone, someone properly trying to take your head off. To do, to do that under them lights is, is something that will stand, stand you in great stead, not just in boxing career, but as a man, you know, that, that's, that's a pressure you have to deal with. Very few people have to deal with, and uh, yeah, I'm glad I didn't have to deal with it. Yeah, I think so. You know, it was, it was, like, it was like the atmosphere kind of for when you fought for the world title. It was the exact same as that. You know, walking out and so much people going crazy cheering the other. There's a lot more people who your fight, obviously, but. It was a small arena, it was a debut, it was like a world title atmosphere. And before the fight I, I was, I was like, what have I kind of got myself into? But then I remembered I asked for it, so, you know, you get what you asked for at times. And Only difference there was you didn't get battered and I did. <laughs> uh, uh, well, that's, that's true. <laughs> it's obviously kind of physically you're, you're grand, but, you know, emotionally and you're, you, you're taking out a bit of a hit. And it's very hard to, to suffer a defeat in the first defeat in like eight or nine years. So, you know, you can always be proud of the fact that you give it everything. But uh, I'm happy in, in, in a sense that, you know, I was beat by the better man. I, I performed the, 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 everything I needed to do. I ticked every box in training camp. I, I did everything that was needed to be done for myself. It wasn't like I was unfit or going in wrong. I was went in with a great great camp, we were mentally prepared, physically prepared, just I met someone who was better than me. And uh, you know, when you think of a league out there it's it, it it's not too bad but you know, he was he was quality and you know it's kinda it does leave a bit of a, a sickener no matter what. You know for me I was I was really sad but there was there was comfort in your loss because of who you lost to. For me, you know, I, I usually I look, if you had a loss to someone else, even like when I look back on your performances where you underperformed but you still won, and especially because it was your first loss too, I, w I was thinking I was going to be a lot more emotional. But I, I look back even like on the Anthony Nelson fight and I say like, I, I, I was in the change room and I was deflated even though he had won. I was like, he didn't show half how good he was and, you know, he's in there having, a war with someone who's ten times better on, and I felt, I felt like you had lost in say because I, I, even though you had gained millions of fans, it was like I know how good you are, and I, I, that it kind of was a letdown for me on that one. Mm. Not a letdown, but you no, know, I felt I wanted to see more of you. I wanted to see a better you, just for your, your hang. And I know how you feel too, and this, you feel the same because I remember you saying after you were pissed off. So when you lost the Ankaras, I was like. It is what it is. This guy's he's not anything else. He's not a brace lever fighter. This guy's like elite, really top. Yeah, mini Manny Pacquiao. A mini, uh, the mini Pacquiao, you know what I mean? So, and like, who's the, one of the fighters I've looked up to all my life is Manny Pacquiao. And when you watch Ankaras, he's just, he is a mini Pacquiao. And when you lost to him, it was like, all right, he was beaten by a better man. And it was just, it was as simple as that there. 
took it on the chin. It was a few levels of behind this guy tonight, and that's just how it was. Yeah, well, I said he was, he was, he was quality in every department, but like the faced harder punchers than him, you know. Even though if I was up and down like a yo-yo, um, even he just done me in the first round with a great body shot. I think it was his precision. Yeah, he, he was very awkward. Yeah. He hit you, hit you on the same spot. I've never felt the pain like he hit me in the first round of the body. And my, my arms went heavy, my legs went heavy. The whole body just took everything out of me. But uh, like Granados uh, and the other kind of, what did the last guy, Nicaraguan guy, Cardoso, they, they hit harder on him, like 10 times harder on him, they hit you. And you made you think of nursery school, you know, you're going, ah, get me out of here. You were trying to think of like, happier times when, yeah. when they were hitting you just wee jabs. But when he hit you, you stayed hit. You kinda, he hit you the one first round, hit me in the body, and um, it just never recovered kind of thing. It, and that's the, that's the sickening feeling. That's the only wee sickening feeling about it all, is that, like, you what go, what, what if? if? You know, I mean, if he didn't hit me that shot, what if? Because it, other than that, it was kind of nip yeah. and tuck. There was no, no real difference. And it's just one of them things that now you got to live with and get over. You know, as long as I know I prepared, I done whatever I needed to do going in there. And um, I, I'm happy with myself. I'm happy. I'm content with what has happened. And, you know, now we're going to just relax, enjoy Christmas. Well, I wanted to do, well, New, get New York out of the way, you know, because... Yeah. Go to New York, you know. No matter what, you may be like Ireland's next great star, but to me, you're still your little brother. So, going over to New York, or have, you, you have that there. That was the main goal. And then, uh, since since that's over and done, now uh, we can sit down, get fat, enjoy Christmas, and and relax a bit. Yeah, definitely. That was another thing. That was the best. That was the best shooting camp I've seen you have, and the best kind of mentally prepared I've ever seen you for a fight. So, on that note. What That's do you it, think? Huh? What do you think's next for you? Well, it's not like it's not like in training camp. You were, you know, when someone's done, they're done before they win their fight. You kind of you you get old pretty quick in this game, and you know, we had world champions in training camp sparring like fantastically, like just dis like destroying them in sparring, and that's that's the thing. That's why. Kind of leads me to say there's still more in the game. I can still more. I can still give more in the game. Um, it makes me kind of think. But then at times when when I get out of the ring, my initial statement, my initial kind of thought thought process with you, my dad, was uh, you know, this is me, kind of. I, I can relax now. I'm done. I think you, I think I can go. I can go. I'm done with the game, and I can go off in the other things and in, in the sport. But then when you sit down for a week and you kind of sulk and you, you, you overthink things and you, you over overreact things and you just keep rehearsing it all in your head and reconstructing it, you go, you know, I had a great 10 weeks. I performed at the highest level and in daily, daily in the gym. And, you know, we had, like, the, the Mexican spawn partners in. We had every world-level spawn partners, former world champions, like, current, like, title holders. So... And I was on top in every spar, on top with the heavier guys, the, the later guys, everyone was kind of the same and it felt fantastic. And I st there's still something else in there and there's still something else to achieve. And, you know, I'll sit down with the people close to me over Christmas and we'll, and we'll make a big decision after, after, the, after the new year. Being home a wee bit now, it's completely Baltic. Different uh, Santa Monica Boulevard, LA, Venice Beach that you've been used to. Here is life in, in, uh, on the West Coast, isn't it the West Coast, yeah? yeah it's the West Coast. Um, yeah, it's good, it's, it's, it's different, it's big. It's just, it's a big, big landscape. You know, everywhere you go is, is 20 minutes from somewhere and traffic is just crazy. And you're always a good bit away from everything. Uh, even though it's close in May, it's just to, to get there with the traffic, it's a bit crazy. It does make you miss Belfast. Um, I'll admit that. I'm, I feel before I went, you know, I didn't think I was a homebird, but the longer I've been away, I've realised I actually I'm a homebird. Uh, I enjoy being home. I enjoy being around the likes of yourself and, and my mum and my dad and stuff. You know, I think I just like being around my own kind of people. Uh, 
but for me it's it's good I've settled in I've 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 just been over there for work basically it's that's what it is it's just me working and you know that's the way I've looked at it and, and took this year and you know I've got I've got in I've I've met a lot of people I've done an awful lot of training over there but nothing beats Belfast New York St Paddy's Day we're all coming back and we're coming back and in our droves, and it's it's something to look forward to. New York has been like a second home yeah. to you, you know. Even though you're living in L.A., yeah. New York is a new home, and it's it, it it suits you. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't think if I look back on this year, I say it's been a great year, and what I've done has been fantastic. If someone comes and says to me, "Do you think you could settle there?" I would say, "Nah, L.A. wouldn't be a place I could settle." But if they asked me, "Could you settle in New York?" I would say, "Oh, one hundred percent." You know, I think New York is just like a mini Ireland at times. Every, everywhere you go, you see someone you know. Uh, and especially around St Paddy's Day, you know. Oh, coming through that arena on St Paddy's Day last time, I just seen like, I was walking down, I was like, I know him, I know him, I know him. And this is re getting ready to fight. I was just seeing like all familiar faces back from school, from primary school. So it's like, I think it is, it is more of a homely place for me, New York. And they have made me feel like it is my second home and you know, I could definitely see myself sitting in there one day. Well, one familiar face you, have, you had to stay away from for a near full year was, was Paddy Barnes. You know, we were with him in New York at the weekend and I think uh, New York was too big for Paddy. He got lost in one block. <laughs> I think we, we lost him at Macy's. I'm not joking, we had to go to the, the Tannoyd and get it announced over Tannoyd to see if he was, there was a mini leprechaun running about, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Have you seen him yet, no? Um, yeah, see, we've seen him in New York, you know, uh, had a few drinks, had a bit of fun. But uh, I think, you know, the year away from Paddy has, has made me kind of grow up a bit and, <laughs> and, 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 and become my own kind of man, you know, instead of always just being the getter, having the, the double act going. But uh, no, nah, you definitely miss him, you definitely miss his crack and his humour. If, if you had him in LA, who knows, he could probably be staying there, but, oh, you know... Uh, no, you couldn't. No. <laughs> in the last two training camps, two or two, three training camps with him have been, have been a nightmare. The, the fella's his hard work. I don't know how you've stuck him for all them years. And <laughs> He's always at the physio. Li living, <laughs> li living with him there for, for eight weeks in the, in the training camps has been tough. I don't know how you stay in the high performance team with him because <laughs> the guy just, he's non-stop. He's, he's hyperactive. He can't sit about. Um, he could have ADHD, who knows? You know, I told him we were here today, I'm, I'm still waiting on him just to bounce in and like, try and sabotage, sabotage the whole thing like, and say this is his TV show. But uh, no, it's good, to be, it's good, it's good for him, he's, his career is, is taking off now, he's starting to win belts, you know, he's European champion of the world as he likes to call it, and intercontinental champion of the universe. So, you know, the, the wee man has got a big future, the both of you came through the same system and it's going to be big nights to come in Ireland with the both of us. Saying that as well now, because we're both the same team. You seem to have got a new job. Uh, a part of uh, the team and how are you feeling? What's, what's the job about? What, what does it entail? What are you going to be doing? No, it's, it's, all, it's a wide variety of things, you know, it's kind of... It's to help the, 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 the new breed of Irish boxers coming through, because you know, starting out my career, I had no one backing me, no one behind me, Ken, and it was like, it was very hard. You were always, you were fighting on after the main event. You were six o'clock at night, you were having to sell tickets, you were fighting the leisure centers. It was, a, it was, a, it was no glitz and glamour. So it was to be with the, the, the youth coming through, with, with the, making the pro transitions and just kind of helping them along. And, you know, it's something, I, I love the sport and I love being involved in the sport, so, um, you know, it, it's something that not much boxers get is a, is a job at the end of the career. And I um, didn't know what, I have a job there for me when I'm done and dusted with, with actually fighting. It's uh, very reassuring for both me and both from my family. And, you know, kind of going forward, it's exciting times. And to be involved in, like, your career with Paddy, with the, the likes of Gary Colley, Lewis Crocker, the lads coming through, is kind of... It's exciting times for Belfast, exciting times for Ireland, and, you know, we have fantastic fighters here and it's, for the next five years, I feel is, is huge, huge for Ireland. Next two months now, you've got two months to go more or less before it's D-Day, baby day. Are you looking forward to being the daddy? I'm very excited, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's a big change, big life change, but um, I love my sleep. 
I'm, I'm, I'm listening to everyone saying that just get your sleep now, but well, if I don't have a good eight hours sleep, I'm very, I'm not a great, great person to be around. And you know, changing nappies as well is something I've never done. You know, okay, now, I, I struggle to look after myself in times and fix my hair in the mornings. Now I have to, I have to look after someone else. It's going to be, uh, it, it's, it's life changing. Now, and you know. It makes Christmas all the more special this yeah. year. It's our last yeah. Christmas, just the two of us, me, me and the fiance, and you know, it's exciting times. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm cutting down the days. Every day is like getting a, a step closer. We're eight weeks to go now. I said to Tracy yesterday that uh, it's a training camp now. Yeah. It, it usually is an eight-week <laughs> training camp, waiting that this kid comes, and I'm excited for the for the baby to come. But then you're going yourself. Oh, what have I got myself in for? You know, okay, now, the house is immaculate every day. This is going to be wrecked every day. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a clean freak. You know, everything has to be a set way. But now when this baby comes, I know this house is going to be turned upside down, and it's going to. It's, I have no, no grey hairs, no really, no real grey hairs. Um, I can see a few, a few coming through. That's only because, because uh, <laughs> my feet I'm getting dropped all the time. That's why I'm going to, I'm going to get beat every day. So, um, come with the baby coming, and it's going to be. Stressful moments, and then you know, I've been sitting on the sideline watching you with, with your wee one and, and, and Brandon with his one, and I'm going to myself, Oh man, this is a 24 hour, seven day a week <laughs> job, and I just I don't think I'm cut out for it, but yeah, I'm excited, very excited. Everything to do with my life, it's, it's definitely been the joy of watching my daughter grow, and you know, I think maybe you seeing her in New York has uh scared you a bit because <laughs> she, she was a bit crazy but no it's going to be unbelievable one thing I'm saying you said you love your sleep um, maybe you should still keep boxing because then you can use the excuse you're in training camp and you need to go to bed early and stuff so Paddy Barnes does so, uh, that, that worked for me an awful yeah. lot too uh, so Paddy goes to training camp to get away from his kids so uh, I can see that as an excuse for myself as well but no no it's something that's been ingrained in mean, us from from we were kids, his, his family is everything, and you know, kind of. Now I've got my own family coming. Recently moved out, or a bigger house. Now we've moved out of Belfast, and it's kind of. It's great now that we have kind of like big, big back gardens and something to give our kids. We we had no back garden growing up. We had no front garden. We kind of, we had a wee small terrace house with the five, well, seven of us all in it. So, it was kind of the small growing up, and you know. I remember you used to never get breakfast because I used to eat before you. And you, you were still the younger brother. You used to have to keep you in lane. Yeah, I was the oldest, so I was first to eat in the morning. You were probably the last to eat, but no. Yeah. It, it's it's something that is very... It's ingrained in us. The family is everything. It's kind of something I'm looking forward to now, to start my own family and growing it and getting bigger. And, you know, it's exciting times, and it's times... It, it's This is what... You know, sport and all is, takes us takes a back seat to this. This is yeah. the kind of this is why we take punches, give punches, hurt people, get hurt. You know, put on a show is because we do it all for for family. Yeah, that's true. So you're 31 year old and you're finally growing behave, up. Behave, behave. I'm not 31. I'm, I've got <laughs> stopped. Anyone who asks us in New York, they all say that, and even still now, they all say I'm the younger brother. And uh, uh, you know, if, when I when I cut my hair cut and shave and stuff. I still look like I'm 21 year old, fresh, young killer. You know, make, you're getting old, kid. You're you're taking more punches than I am. And yeah, I know I'm not. I'm still, I, I still got a straight nose. I was looking at this the other day in a picture from a side. I still, I've took a lot more beatings than you have, and I've got a straight nose, and you've got a battered nose. No, so don't even no, dare no, start no, me no. on that one. This nose happened London 2012 training camp, and it wasn't a straight on blow. It was a clip across the side, and it flattened in a bit. I don't know how. But come on, look at your eyes, look at your face, look at mine, come on. What oh, lovely brown eyes. Look, look, look at this here. Thick eyebrows. There's like a knot in your like eyelid. A, Italian stallion here, so young. Um, a knot in my eyelid. Oh, well, that's fresh. I'll go away. I know what they're between nerves every day. I'm talking. I'm doing dirt fresh. Up my age in this here TV program. It, like, I'm insulted, you know. For you're years, 30, I, you're 30 for years I, growing up. For years, I told people I was like 26. I, I know. I was 26. And then, do you know, I believed it myself that I was like still the age I was known. Someone asked me the other day, what age I was? 29. And I think it was you went, why is up you're 31? I was like, I believed I was 29. Do you mean you do a saw time? Any time we talk, you're, we're talking to someone, someone asks your age, you like, you give a false age. And I'm like, 
he's turned steel two years here every I'm every right time. At the stage that they, that I still look as handsome as I do, and uh, and the beatings I've took and the wars I've been in, you know, it's still kind of straight nose. I, I'm I'm happy with that. High cheekbones. Yeah. You've got it all in front of you. All in front of you. Right. Just hopefully you don't take as much as I took. <laughs> I read somewhere that um, me and my dad were uh, are, are your biggest biggest influences on your career. So. Am I still your hero or what? <laughs> Even though uh, I got battered there, am I still your hero? Nah, definitely. Um, as everybody knows, and, and especially you know as well, the only reason I really get into boxing was because you and Brenton were doing it. When I seen you two doing it, I just wanted to be like you and you know, when Brenton kind of fell away from the sport, it was I wanted to be like you and you were the oldest, so I was always anything you ever done. And, I think if, if you probably had a stop boxing, just say when you were 18 or something, I probably would have stopped boxing back then and, and I wouldn't probably I wouldn't be boxing now, I'd probably be doing whatever uh, working a, a nine to five or, or doing something like that and you know I think you're the, the reason I'm still in the sport. You're the person I've always looked up to the sport and you know someone who I always admire because when you go into the ring you leave everything in there. You show heart, you show you have a sheer will of determination, you know it's it's unbelievable. So yeah you are you're definitely still my hero and I think you and my dad are definitely the two biggest influencers on my career. Influencers on my career because any time anything happens, you're the first two people I talk to, and first you're probably the first person to ask because my dad always is very opinionated. Uh, you'll you'll sit back and listen to my opinion before you have your own, and then you know I always kind of lean towards what you both say first. Well, the only reason why I got into boxing is because my dad said that uh, I played for, play for one. My dad said Michael Owen was a boxer, and he was the same height as me because we were both midgets. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's how he got better at football and was able to bully people off the ball. But I oh, had to lead by example, and everyone else followed. But actually, our brain was the first one to go boxing, the one yeah, between yeah. Me, and, me and you. And kind of, he was the boxer, where uh, me and you were just, well, actually, when you came along, yeah. started it. You were able to beat me and Brendan up when we were like five years older on you, so that's how we knew you were going to be great um, yeah. from a young age. Belfast boxing is, is booming. I think um, we are just out, maybe just out of the golden age of, of Irish amateur boxing um, with yourself, Paddy, you know, Joe Ward, John Joe Nevin, Katie Taylor, you know, the, 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 the uh, Kenny Egan, you know. The, the, the cream of the crop for the past maybe eight, maybe 12 years. Yeah, 12, um, 12 definitely. It was a fantastic era of um, Irish amateur boxing. You know, we're coming through a transition period at the minute. Uh, Sean McComb, you know, the kind of Brandon Irvine, the lads coming through now are going to be, they're, they're the new veterans on the team. And just in real, like Brandy was the, the, the youngster coming through and used were the veterans. It's, it's it's going to be a transition period in the come off games coming up. The, the lads are going to be pushing for 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 stardom. They're, they're going to be on traditional TV, and it's it's a chance then for them to to set out a new age of of, of Irish amateur boxing. But the professional scene now, I think, is entering the golden age. You know, you've seen the figure, the viewing figures there, and the the, the crowds that come out. The myself, Carl Frampton yeah, show in huge. the Odyssey Arena in in, in um, a few a few weeks ago. So I think. The, the, the age of a professional boxing is here, it's now, it's yourself, Paddy. Carl Frampton is kind of probably the best boxer to come out of the country, um, especially with the titles he's won, you know, yeah. kind of the, the things he's done, his, his achievements is, is unheard of. Yeah. You know, kind of Ram Barnett behind, right behind him, and then the, the new cream coming through, you've Dave Albert Joyce, who was a, a former teammate of you, Gary Coley, Crocker. Uh, Lewis Crocker, who's heavy-handed as, as anyone you'll see, you know, kind of, you've got fantastic talent coming through and, you know, the next five years, you know, Carl will probably have a few years left in him, but then there's there's a chance for yourself to kind of take the mantle that, that, that Carl finishes and leaves. It'll be up to you, the likes of Paddy, that they kind of continue this baton and everyone is behind it, you know, it's, they've seen the crowds coming over to, to St. Paddy's Day, your debut, the crowds coming out for Carl and Next year, you, Belfast, we're going to get a big one? Yeah, I think so. If you look, like the talent now in Belfast is unbelievable. And it has been like a steady pr process from the amateurs to the pros with all these guys coming through, like Burnett, who's a unified world champion now. 
got Frampton, who was a top class amateur. All the good amateurs now who are turning pro, they're they're become, becoming really successful, and it's it's great to see. I think you're right. The golden age of professional boxing in Ireland has definitely started. Um, the next, I think, five to ten years is going to be fantastic. You know, I think we're going to get numerous world champions or a number of world champions. Sorry. It, it, there's so much depth in Irish boxing now, it's it, professional boxing, when there used to be none really. Uh, it's unbelievable and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how Irish boxing does in the next few years. I think we're going to have, I think we could be the number one nation, or up there in the top top three anyway nations in the world. Well, I think 2018 will, will prove that uh, there will be an explosion of, of, of Irish fighters reaching for the top and you know the amount of shows that's planned for 20, 2018 is going to be, it's going to set this, the, 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 the sights really good and the, the, the heights that everyone can reach is, is, is fantastic.